What is up, people? Van from the Vanverse Gaming Channel here, bringing another Solasta build video. Uh, due to popular demand, I'm going to do a couple more build videos, and I might even make some videos on just straight up, this is what a Paladin looks like, and get into some detail. But in today's video, we are going to cover a very fun tank build. It's a Barbarian tank build that I like to nickname the Teflon Lizard. Yes, I came up with it on my own. It's, it's great, right? So... What makes a Barbarian a great tank is the fact that they have more hit points than any other class because their hit dice is a D12. And that while they're raging, they already get damage resistances to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Now, as you can imagine, armor is important to a point, right? If you have a 20 armor class, 25 armor class, right, that's good for you. The higher up you get, the more pluses that the creatures are getting to their attacks... So ultimately, if even if you have a 20 AC and they roll a 10, they're still going to hit you. So sometimes it's not about preventing damage, it's about when you do get hit, reducing the damage. And that's why a Barbarian makes a good tank. Now on top of that, we are going the Path of the Claw, and we're really leaning in on damage resistances. So now won't, we won't only be resistant to slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning, we're going to be resistant to another up to 6 damage types which we'll do here in a second. So to, to start this off, we're going Dragonborn because we want to get resistances in one of these five. Now I will tell you, in Solasta, I did the math and I looked at all the spells and, and monsters and the most common damage is fire. Second comes in at poison. Third, which is really, really close, is necrotic. And then fourth is acid. After that, lightning, cold, radiant, all of those are very minuscule. And so it depends on what you want to do. The only way you're going to get to nine resistances is if you pick up three items. Those three items are going to require attunement slots. Ultimately, 90% of all damage you're going to take is from four different types, maybe five. So what I would recommend is if you don't want to rely on items, then I would pick up either fire or I would pick up Acid on this round. So let's just pick up Acid. Now, we're going Barbarian like we said. A lot of people don't realize that a Barbarian can wear a shield. Many people don't play a Barbarian wearing a shield because they want to use a two-hander. In this case, you're a tank. So if you want to go more tanky, you can put that shield on to get some extra armor class. and It doesn't affect your rage or any of that. So keep that in mind. It's really up to your playstyle if you want to go two-hander and still do some damage while being more tanky, or if you really want to lean into being a tank and wear a shield. So now we're going to talk about backgrounds. Ultimately, the background that is the most thematic is probably the Wanderer. It's what came out when the Barbarian came out as well. Um, to me, low life could be a good option if you don't have a very dexterous character. That This gives you proficiency with these tools. So you're not going to be a great rogue, but you're a good rogue substitute. So that's a good option to do this because your dexterity is going to be fairly high to kind of take on that role. Spy is another good option because of proficiency with poisoner kits. Being able to apply poison to your weapons will just add to your additional damage. So those are the three that I would recommend. Doesn't matter which one you choose. We'll just go low life for, I don't know. All right, so now let's talk about our stats. Now, many people have commented that all of my builds are very min-maxi and that the game's easy because I build all my characters that have very high attributes. As I don't disagree, this also is a video game, but I decided to go point by to show people a build that they might want to use that's not very, uh, quote-unquote, meta min-maxi. So we're obviously going to put most points into strength. The next is going to be dexterity, followed by constitution. Intelligence, wisdom, and charisma be damned. We have no interest in any of that. Now here, you know, you can put some in athletics, and then obviously we're negative one on everything. So it really doesn't matter what you choose here, so I'm just going to auto whatever you think. Probably perception is going to be your best bet. We're going to give ourselves a name here, whatever it is, and now we're going to get to level two, and we're going to level this character up to 16. Now after we level this character up to 16... Then I'm going to jump into the pre-Palace of Ice and just kind of show you at level 10 some of the gear options that will actually help this character. All right, so next thing, we're going to hit level 2. We're going to get Danger Sense. This is going to be super important into our tankiness because Dexterity Saving Throws, we will have advantage against effects and spells. 
So every time they cast a lightning bolt or a fireball at you, you're gonna have advantage on saving. If we are also resistant to fire damage, now we are going to take no damage. So in fifth edition D&D, being resistant means you take half the damage you normally would. If an attack requires you to make a saving throw, and if you pass that saving throw, you take half damage. Well, now if you're resistant, you take half of that, or you take the rest of it, which is zero. So that's kind of how it works. So fireballs and lightning bolts will not affect you because most likely you're going to pass your save and depending on what you build damage resistance, you're not going to take any damage. All right, so now we're going to level up to three. So this is where we, we lean into your damage resistance here. We are going to go for Path of the Claw and this is going to give us another damage resistance type. So our options are Acid, Fire, Poison, Cold, and Lightning. As I told you before, we picked Acid. I'm going to pick Fire with the assumption that we're going to make up for some of the other ones later. If you really want to lean in and get nine damage resistances, I would recommend picking lightning here, but ultimately it really isn't going to affect much. Fire is probably going to be your best, best bet. All right, so now we're going to level four. So here is where we get our ability score increase or a bonus feat, and we're going to bonus feat because we're going to get Badland Marauder. Badlands Marauder gives us resistance to poison, and plus one to our constitution and advantage on rolls against being poisoned. This is something that you just can't say no to. And at this point, at level four, you now are resistant to piercing, slashing, bludgeoning, fire, acid, and poison. So you have six damage resistances while raging at level four. So at this point, nothing is going to contribute to our damage resistance from this point on. We're just going to level up a Barbarian as we normally would. We're going to get extra attack and fast movement at level 5. When we hit level 6, we're going to get our uh, Claw 1, our Claw Path of the Claw thing. So Draconic Wrath, where we can use a bonus action and do a Breath Weapon. Uh, we get additional use of our Rage. And then when we get to level 7, now we're getting Feral Instinct, so we have advantage on initiative rolls and we can't be surprised, so good stuff. And then we're going to get to level 8. So here's where it can kind of go multiple different ways. Now that we've got our damage resistances under control, we can talk about two things. One, armor class, or two, we can talk about damage. So as a Barbarian, as I said, you could do Sword and Board and go more tanky with an armor class. Or you could put more into your decks and constitution because a Barbarian's AC, if they're not wearing armor, is equal to 10 plus their decks and their con together. So that is right now would be a 15 AC. So you can see I have a 15 AC and that makes sense. If I were to put on medium armor, the best medium armor you can get is half plate. Half plate, I believe, is 14 AC plus your deck. So you can get like a 16 AC. Maybe it's 16 AC and then you can end up with an 18. I think it's an 18 AC with your plus two decks and then with your shield. So you could have a 20 armor class with medium armor. However, finding half plate or breastplate is gonna be hard early on. And this build is kind of starting you from level one. So you're either gonna be playing the Lost Valley or you're gonna be playing the, the, the ma major campaign. If you're jumping right into POI, then half plate's gonna be easy to find. So. What we're going to do is we are going to go into ability scores, bonus feats. If you're going feat, you can either do follow-up strike, which gives you a second attack. So if you're using a two-hander, you would get your main attack twice because you have uh, extra attack. And then you get a third attack, which only takes your strength bonus. If you're going sword and board, you might not want to do this. You may want to put attribute points in because you're going to get more bang for your buck. The other option is this whole mighty blow where it takes your half your strength and rounds it up. We don't have that high, I mean, our strength is good, so this is an option, but an, an extra attack would probably be better than just adding some damage. And if you're not going two-hander, I would not pick a feat. So we're gonna say that we are not gonna go two-hander and I'm gonna do an ability score increase and I'm gonna do my strength to an 18, that gives us a plus one. And then I'm gonna do my uh, dexterity up one that gives us a plus three. So right now I have a 16 AC if I'm not wearing armor and I get plus four to my strength. So I'm happy with this. All right, we're gonna go to level nine. So level nine, we're gonna get brutal critical. So we're gonna get additional crit on our, our crit damage, additional uh, damage roll, and we're gonna get another rage. Then we're going to go to level 10. 
Level 10, we're going to get Dragon's Blessing. So when we're raging, we're going to add our elemental damage. So this would be the fire. We're going to add fire damage to our attacks. So ultimately, you probably want to go fire first and then acid second because most things are, are resistant to fire. And so picking acid under your Path of the Claw will probably do you better because then your breath weapon and also your attacks would be acid damage, not fire. All right. So then we're going to hit level 11. This is where we get Relentless Rage. This is great, because then we're never going to be done raging. We're always going to have a chance to stay raging, and that's important for our damage resistances is to be raging. And then we're going to get to level 12. At this point, you got another choice. You can start leaning into more feats. So if you went, if you go feat, and you went down here and you did the follow-up strike, now might be a good time to pick up Mighty Blow. If you want to go more armor class, you can pick up like an Armor Master, or if you're sticking to the sword and board, then my recommendation is to stay ability scores and to put it into constitution. And now you got an 18 strength, 18 constitution, 16 dexterity. All right, we're going to level 13. So at this point, if you're level 13, this is only when you're in the Palace of Ice DLC. You get another uh, brutal crit option here. So now you can roll two additional damage dice when you crit. So four total, which is great. And then you get this Frightening Strike when you get to level 14. While raging, a creature must hit you with a melee attack, wisdom saving throw, or become frightened. And then we're going to get to 15, and we're almost done here. You get Persistent Rage, where pretty much nothing's breaking you out of your rage. And then last, you'll get to 16, and this is where you're going to get another ability score increase. So at this point, it's really up to you. You could put 2 into Strength and go 20 Strength. It really depends on how you build your character. Um, I'm going to put my, my extra two into strength and just lean into my damage, but it's really up to you if you want to pick up more feats, more, you know, two-hander version feats. You could even potentially add, like, you know, acid damage to your weapon attacks, uh, so you'd get 1d8 acid damage from Path of Claw, and then on top of that, you could pick another acid damage from a feat, so you're getting basically up to 12 acid damage in addition to your attacks. Whatever you want to do, I'm sticking with strength. Okay. So now that we have him built out and we kind of have an idea of his damage resistances, we're at six damage resistances. So we're going to go into the game. I'm going to show you a level 10 version and just kind of talk to you about how gear will play into this. So let's go do that right now. Okay, so now let's kind of talk about gear on this uh, damage resistant lizard Teflon tank. So we're going to go into some inventory here. So there's two things, right? If you're going to go right into the Palace of Ice DLC, you're not going to have some of these items that I'm going to show you unless you're importing a character that maybe you pick these items up. Depending on which items you bring over from Crown of the Magister or if you jump right in, is really going to dictate how many damage resistances you have and which ones you should probably pick. So let's kind of get into this. First thing is talk about weapons, right? So you can go two-hander or you can go sword and board. If you go sword and board, you're going to get a shield right here. And then you can also do something like a Warden Blade to get additional AC. And then, obviously, the more potent your shield is, the higher your armor class is going to be. Now, I'm currently running 20 AC because I have my Barbarian clothes on, so it's going to be 10 plus 6, so 16. If I drop on my Half Plate, I'm getting to 22. Now, it's also because I have a Warden Blade, right? If I didn't have the Warden Blade, it'd be closer to 21. But ultimately, you can get some pretty decent armor class. You're not wearing heavy heavy armor. You're not wearing plate armor. But with, like, heavy plate armor, start getting some pluses, a shield. You can get a pretty decent armor class and be more tanky than if you were to go just, like, a two-hander and have a much lower AC. So ultimately, your best choice is a half plate. Um, and then you can also choose maybe a studded leather, depending on how high your dexterity is. And then a breastplate. So... I really would say that because you're a barbarian, you're either going to wear no armor, breastplate, or half plate, half plate being the best. Now, when we talk about damage resistances, I already said in the beginning that acid, fire, poison, and um, necrotic are the four most, most potent damage resistances in the game. So we picked acid as our dragonborn. We picked fire as our path of claw. We should probably have swapped those. Fire, dragonborn, acid, path of claw. And then we picked poison as our badland marauder. So really the only one we have an account for is Necrotic. Now, there is a ring that you can get in a side quest that is in the um, in the Crown of the Magister game. That is what I would suggest is what you would wear to give you the Necrotic. 
There's also a necklace you can get in the Lost Valley that also gives you protection of necrotic damage. I believe it's called... Uh, I forget what it's called. Um, but they also have it available as a vendor in POI, depending on which depending on which faction you go up to, is which vendor you will buy that to give you that necklace that gives you necrotic damage. These are attunement slots, so keep that in mind. You're going to be attuning. Now, the other damage resistance that is not as common, but the damage is very painful and a lot of creatures use it, is cold resistance, especially in Palace of Ice. So this also, this cold resistance ring also came from a DLC, or I'm sorry, from a side quest, I believe, in Crown of the Magister. So you would have that if you imported that into your game. If you're going right into Palace of Ice, I do believe there are vendors that do sell these rings. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I do know that Boots of the Winterland is something that you can make right away. You get a recipe for it really early on. And so if you can't do the ring, you can always put on the Boots of the Winterland and get that cold damage resistance. There is a fire resistance ring. There's not many other things in the game item-wise that gives you fire resist. So that's why picking fire resist in the beginning is probably a good idea. So ultimately, if you're going straight into Palace of Ice, I would go fire resistance, Dragonborn, acid resistance, Path of the Claw, poison resistance, Badlands, Marauder, and then I would put on probably Boots of the Winterlands at that point. At that point, you are pretty much covered except for Necrotic, and then I would chase down that Necrotic Damage neck piece if you didn't play through the Crown of the Magister. So ultimately, this is what the build is going to look like. You are going to be either a two-handed or a sword and board, just walking tank that is resistant and almost immune to at minimum six damage types, at maximum up to nine damage types, depending on what you choose. So hopefully you guys like this video. Uh, hopefully you put it into action and see it work on your own. I'd love to hear your feedback and comments on the video. And as always, thank you for watching. This is Van from the Vanderbilt Gaming Channel. Cheers and peace out.